people, I encourage and counsel them, and I exhort them, and I beg with them. I had a man that used to take me out witnessing. He was, I called him Caleb. He was 85 years old, and he'd go witnessing with me, and he would get on his knees and plead with people with tears coming down his cheeks. Even when my friend Caleb and I, that's what I call him, Mr. Mr. Simmons and I would go out witnessing, even when he prayed, and he, he just just so full of the Spirit. Even when he prayed in Jesus' name to set somebody free from an addiction or a, a relationship where there's a lot of anger management problems or there's a lot of mismanagement of finance or what, he and I both could not agree together and pray in Jesus' name and automatically the people just stopped doing it. Or they, they started acting right. So then I began wondering, well, is there something the matter with me? Because I knew there was nothing the matter with Mr. Simmons, the guy I called Caleb. He was like, he and his wife were so godly people, you know, just serving the Lord all the time. I wish he was still with us. I'd love him to come talk to young people, he and his wife. And she'd get on with her, kit, with her uh, house dress on, if you all know what I mean. She had a house dress, apron, high heels, and her broom. <laughs> and she'd talk to young people, and she'd let them know which way the cornrows are supposed to go here, you know. And she's like, she just simply laid it out. But even God-fearing people cannot just say anything in Jesus' name, and Jesus is going to do it. You can't ask for crazy things, and God's going to do that. So, what does it mean? Is when Jesus says, if you ask anything, does he mean anything? Or is it in the name that's important and what in the world does that mean i want to tell you this is really important to understand it because i want every brother and sister to know what this means i want us to be praying i want us to be praying for right and i want us to have faith in god that when we ask for god's will to be done he's going to do it and we're going to see it happen this i think are some of the most difficult in the bible to understand because of my experience an observation that i cannot just say whatever and that's going to happen just doesn't happen. But other times I know that God has answered my prayers when I pray 
in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray, and God has done miracle, amazing things. Amen, that's right. So what does he mean? Is he talking about miracles, or what did he mean when he said greater things? I don't know about you, Pastor Kirk, but I think about greater things, and I think, wait a minute. You got the wrong guy. It's like, he's Jesus. How in the world do I think that I'm going to do a greater thing than Jesus? That does not make sense to me. I would love to do in the will of God, according to the word of God, I would love to do the things that God wants me to be doing and you to be doing, us to all be doing together and to see tremendous fruit from it and greater things. I mean, if he broke bread and prayed and over it and fed 3,000 or 5,000 men at a time, I'd like to do 30,000 or 50,000 at a time. Right. I'd like to fill the L.A. Coliseum with people and have them come to Christ and be saved and Amen. become disciples. Yeah. But I cannot just say, Jesus, I want you to fill this place with 50,000 people in Jesus' name and think that's just going to happen. So, what did he mean? He never, everything Jesus said is true, right? It's right. true. Yeah. So we got to understand what in the world did he mean? Because I don't think he meant I could just do anything I want to in Jesus' name, and that's going to happen. So that's not what it, I don't think that's what he means. But it is important. We need to understand it. So here's what I'm going to need your help. Back here at the board, I left my remote in my car. So I'm just going to say I need you to go to the next slide. So I need you to advance it. So I have a I have a PowerPoint slideshow on there, and I need you to find it. And it'll help us because it'll help everybody follow what I'm saying. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I want to talk about believing God and doing great things. Because I do have faith, don't you? Amen. I believe God. I have trust in God. He's Amen. changed my life. I don't deserve it. I don't even quite understand how he changed my life. But I know he's just changing my life. Okay? <laughs> and it wasn't me. As you said so well this morning, Pastor Kirk. Great sermon. You're talking about... Self-help books at the airport when I was traveling in business. I saw all those same kind of books And I even bought a few of them. I thought well, I'll give it a whirl and I decided just to take my Bible And so most of the time on the airplane, I just read my Bible It's like and I had more witness opportunities reading my Bible than any self-help book You want a tip? This isn't in my notes. Here's a tip Be reading your Bible anywhere in public You don't have to say anything just be reading your Bible, and somebody will come up to you, and they're going to say, Are you reading the Bible? <laughs> now, if you're from the South, you'd say, Here's your sign. Right? Here's your sign. But, but you know, I didn't do that. I wasn't being a smart aleck. You know, I just say, Yes, I'm reading my Bible. Well, why are you reading it? Or they, and they start all these questions. Well, I, I don't, nobody can understand it. I say, Why do you say that? Nobody can understand it. You know, do you have you read it yourself? Oh yeah, I read it from cover to cover. I said, well, what do you think about that book, Jobs? <laughs> I read that thing and I can't get a job in it. I said, well, you haven't read it. <laughs> so I don't know. That's too bad. That's the same. It's trying to be crazy. People are fun, aren't they? It's fun. Anyway, would you go to the next slide? It says, I have three points, main points in this. Yeah. God answers, thank you so much. You are awesome. They're the best people. Would you thank them? Amen. They're the best people. They do the soundboard, they do the media. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And when you're not there, Nathan can do it. And boy, he can do it too. And, and that other lady, whom, when she's here, they, they, we've got good people to help us. We're so thankful. Anyway, God answers prayer offered in faith. This is verily, verily. That means truly, truly. Verily, it's like it means it means it's it's a fact. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Now that's hard. Think about it. Can you say Lazarus come forth? He says, the works I do shall he do also. It's the word of God. And greater works. Wait a minute. Greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So, condition. First condition, faith. It says, he that believeth on me. He didn't say just anybody. He said, you have to have faith. Believe it. Amen. 
And it's a condition that has to be met in order for God to listen. If you don't believe in him and trust him, why in the world is he going to answer your prayer request? You know, if you believe in him and you trust him and you want to follow him, say, Jesus, help me. I'm kind of dumb, you know. Help me out. Guide me. Make it plain so I know which way you're going. When you want me to wait, make it, you know, hit the stop sign. I'll stop. That's right. You want me to go right? Grab my right ear and say, go right. You know, whatever. I'm relating this to God. It's like our relationship with him needs to be as a child. I need to trust God. And if he says do something, I do it. And if he says don't do it, I need to stop challenging God all the time. I need to say, God, you're right. right. I don't understand you, but I, I'll submit. God loves it. You come to him like a little child and you say, I believe in you and I'll obey you. You just please show, make it plain. Make it real plain to me because I'm kind of dumb. So it's like, you make it plain to me and that's what I'm doing. Or that's what I'm not doing. Whatever you say, that's what I'm doing. So when you start talking about he that believeth on me, I'm just saying the works that I do shall he do also. You cannot do what Jesus does unless you first have a relationship with him and you believe on him and trust him so much that you're willing to obey and do whatever he told you to do or not do the things that the Bible warns you not to do. If you do that, it's like your whole life is so much easier, I'm telling you. And you'll prosper in everything you do. I'm just telling you, if you listen to the word of God, he'll guide you. And the next slide says, Jesus is declaring to us that we're going to be able to do greater works than those which he did. I don't think he means I can do better than him. I can't do, I don't have more power than him. That's not what he means. But when Jesus was on the earth, you realize that for the first time in eternity, God, omniscient God, knowing everything, and omnipresent God had to be in one place at one time. He was in the body of a man. We don't quite understand how humbling that is to go from being on the throne to being able to go back in history, forward in history, be everywhere at once, hear everybody's prayer at once. Now I'm in, a, in one place at one time, and it's in a stable. Shock. We have jet lag when we travel. I cannot imagine what it's like to go from heaven to boom, you're in the stable and now you're in a baby's body and you can't be anywhere else but right there. You didn't know how to walk yet. That's humble. That's Jesus. He's amazing. He's always God. But he limited himself when he was in the body to be in one place. Which means he could only be in one place to do things at one place at one time. He limited himself by choice. He did that for you and me. So while he was on earth, many of his miracles, we're talking miracles now, were physical miracles, weren't they? Breaking the loaves and feeding people and raising people back to life. And he did a lot of different miracles. I mean, there's things that contain water and the wine and restored sight to people and helped people who couldn't walk. He raised them up and they could walk again and, or maybe the first time. And it's like he could do miracles that nobody could do. When Jesus said, I'm going to do greater things, do you think he meant that means I can just go up and restore sight to, uh, to blind people? And can I raise dead people out of the grave? And can I? I don't think he's talking about miracles. He can't. Because the word of God is true. Perfectly true everywhere. So what in the world did he mean? He said, you're going to do greater works. Well, what does that mean? Well... Go to the next slide. When you believe in Jesus, we can do and we will do greater works than he did. So what's the difference between a miracle and a work? There's got to be a difference because if he's talking miracles, I should be able to just... Pastor Kirk and I should just have people lined up here, right? Boom! I can think of some people on my... Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Don't get up. <laughs> Don't get up. I'm telling you, don't get up. <laughs> if I did it once, I can do it again. That's what I call a greater word. 
Jesus is the head of his body, the church, and as his body, we are supposed to carry on the works that he did while he was on earth. The greatest work, we've got to understand, what to him, not, in, not the way we think, to God, what's the greatest work? What's the greatest thing Jesus accomplished coming to earth? Okay. I think the Holy Spirit's working in here tonight. Some of you are in tune with God. 